Welcome back to Tandem Gamers, I'm Nick, and today we're going to be looking for some of the best things to sell in Breath of the Wild. First things first, we're going to go critter hunting for a bit, and to aid me in that, I'm wearing the stealth gear from Kakariko Village. It costs about 1,800 rupees, but once you get it, it pays itself off fairly quickly. We're going to be taking those critters and making some high-valued elixirs, and if you have any more questions or want to understand more about how the multiplier works, uh, check out our video down below. So starting from here, uh, something we can do with the stealth gear is we can just start grabbing critters as we go here. So they just they let you walk right up to them. By themselves, these aren't worth very much, but we're going to be putting things into elixirs, which is going to multiply the overall cost of the base materials. So while we could use all these smaller critters and really cheap monster parts to make cheap potions, we're going to try to find an energetic rhino beetle, because it is the most expensive critter in the game, and it's going to give us the, the most oomph for our, our, our monster parts, which I know are kind of hard to get from time to time. So... We're going to head down to the southern east part of the islands, continent, lower line, village area, and go from there. Uh, the other trick is, though, it does need to be at night. So we're going to try to find one of these little little buggers, take a picture of it, and we'll do a little bit of hunting. Oh, there it is. I found it. I'm going to take a picture of it real quick. Boom. The golden beetle. That's very fitting, I think. Uh, so the energetic rhino beetle, yeah. I'm gonna see if I can catch this little little bugger. I'm just gonna walk up slowly. Oh, how cute! There's two of them. Give it. Boom! We've got money. All right. So now we're able to go into our Sheikah slate, uh, select Sheikah sensor, and we can change the target of that to energetic rhino beetle. Yep, looks like we got another one close by. Maybe this way? Our beetle just vanished because it is now 7 a.m. And they only appear between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. And we're just going to wait for night. That's it. So we're going to rest until 9 o'clock. It's now 9. That's great. Oh, and we've got more beetles. So we're going we're gonna to use the tracking here. As soon as our face is pointing towards it, it'll start pinging green. So I think it's this way, a little more to the right. <laughs> Up the mountain we go. Gotcha! Do you see it? It's like right there. I'm gonna float down. And, uh, grab it! <laughs> nice. So I spent, uh, one night just collecting beetles, and I got about five beetles. Those beetles are worth about 30 rupees a piece. So we could sell those for about 150 rupees, or we could try to combine them to make elixirs. If you try to make all five into one elixir, it won't work, and you'll get dubious food worth about two rupees. We are gonna need at least one monster part. The key here is to make sure you're using five pieces, so even adding one Bacoblin Horn to four will get you an elixir worth about 350 rupees. At this point, you could just mix four beetles with pretty much any monster part you have, and you'll get an average of about 300 to 500 rupees. The only way to go beyond that is going to get better monster parts and start using those because they are worth more than the beetles themselves. This could mean that you go out and fight a bunch of Lynels, but I've had a lot of people tell me that that's too difficult or that they just don't enjoy fighting the Lynels. That being said, using four Lionel Guts and one of these Energized Beetles uh, is the most expensive elixir I've found so far in the game. If you do find one more expensive, please let me know. Uh, that is valued at 2,330 rupees. And so if you have the means to do it, I say go for it. The whole while you're also getting Lionel Hooves and Lionel Horns, and you, you can make quite a bit of money that way. For those of us less inclined to fight a Lionel, we can easily teleport down to Garuda Town, grab a Sand Seal, head dead south to the Oasis, and wait for the Mulduga to show up. This is really one of the easier bosses in the game to beat, and uh, I'm really happy the way Nintendo did this, because it's more of a, once you figure out the mechanic, how easy it becomes. What you're going to want to do is you want to get somewhere safe, like on one of these rocks or on a pillar, uh, throw a rolling bomb out onto the sand, the Maduga will see it, chase it, and then eat it. After it's eaten the bomb, go ahead and detonate it. This will cause the Mulduga to launch out of the ground and lay on the sand for a little bit, where you can just beat the living crap out of it. Uh, if it does go berserk, just hang out on the rock until it shows, until it slows down, and uh, rinse and repeat. Do this over and over again until it dies, and you'll eventually end up with some really great, uh, hopefully, guts and fins, both of which make great components to be mixed with those uh, energetic beetles. And that just about wraps it up for this means of getting rupees in Breath of the Wild. 
The Mulduga parts aren't going to be quite as good as the Lionel parts, but they're quite a bit easier to obtain. Uh, you can also fight a Mulduga once every real day, or uh, once every couple hours, whenever the Blood Moon decides to spawn. As soon as you see the Blood Moon, go back out there, kill another Mulduga, and just keep saving up the parts until you need the money. Once again, I am Nick from Tandem Gamers. Uh, thanks again for watching. If you comment, like, subscribe, help us out a great deal, and we can keep making these great videos for you, as well as our gamer food videos on the same channel. Uh, have a wonderful time playing Breath of the Wild, and good luck hoarding your rupees.